Welcome to part two of my Dangerous Creatures presentation. Today we begin with the deadliest creature of them all. And my apologies if you find this first image too disturbing. Deadliest of all. If you put together all the shark attacks, all the spider and snake bites, all the bee and wasp and jellyfish stings, all the attacks of wild animals on people, the total number of people killed by animals still would be only a tiny fraction of the number of wild animals killed by people. I think this planet is big enough for all kinds of creatures, don't you? You wouldn't want people you didn't even know walking into your house, would you? People don't need guns to kill animals. A single oil spill from one tanker ship can wipe out life for miles around. We humans often destroy wildlife habitats through ignorance, by accident, or even deliberately. People are the most dangerous animals on Earth. We sometimes even pay hunters to kill wild animals. For example, wolves. Wolf, which lives in North America, Eastern Europe, Asia, and Mexico. If a wolf is following you, don't be overly concerned. Wolves have never been known to attack humans. But you don't want to encourage one to come too close, either. Hello? Or is it, keep your distance? Or maybe, I'm having fun? The howl of the wolf can be heard a long way off. Lips curled back, teeth bared. It's not a smile, it means back off. Wolves communicate with all kinds of visual signals, as well as with a wide variety of sounds. Wolves live in many places and have large territories. Some northern wolves share their ranges with wolverines. Wolverine, which lives in North America, Northern Europe, and Siberia. This is one sound effect I had to find online. The program gives you the following sound, which I found out years later is actually a stock lizard noise. You will probably never see a wolverine. They are quite rare. But just because they're small does not mean they're wimps. Pound for pound, a wolverine is one of the toughest creatures on the planet. If one wants your lunch, Hand it over. Grizzly bears and mountain lions. A wolverine will even fight these powerful predators for a kill. Wolverines look, and sometimes act, like miniature bears. They have glands near their tails that produce a musky smell. That's why they're sometimes also known as skunk bears. Some wolverines live in the far north of Europe. The European adder is also found in this location. European adder, which lives in, well, Europe and Asia. Adders sleep under rocks and in crevices instead of digging holes. So keep your fingers out of rock crevices or you may get a nasty surprise. Travel to the African desert and you may see another type of adder, if it's not hiding in the sand. By keeping its head still and wriggling its worm-like tail, an Australian death adder tricks its prey into coming close enough for it to bite. The snake's powerful venom will paralyze the victim in seconds.
The European adder is an unusual snake because it can survive in areas that receive a lot of ice and snow seasonally. Lands of ice and snow. In my travels, I've learned that there are living things that have adapted to every environment on Earth. The natural world is a place that never ceases to amaze me. When it's cold, it's a good idea to have some insulation. The Arctic foxes dress for the weather. Which animals live in the Arctic? Elephant seals? Walruses? Beluga whales? And caribou? Just to name a few. Isn't it amazing that so many animals can survive under extreme conditions, in perpetual ice and snow, or in the heat and dryness of deserts? Desert environments. Lots of desert creatures have special skins that prevent moisture from escaping. When I'm in the desert, I wish I had this skin as well. Water. That's the challenge in the desert. From a hawk's point of view, the desert is a good place to live. There's a lot of room to fly, and saguaro cacti make fine perches to sit on. And prey can be easily spotted from great distances. From a rabbit's viewpoint, there aren't many places to hide. There's more life in a desert environment than you might expect. In the American Southwest, you might find a cougar. Cougar, also called mountain lion or puma, which lives in North and South America. If you see a cougar, do not approach it. Remember that you're in its territory, and it may treat you as badly as you would treat an intruder in your own home. Cougars used to roam all over North America. Now they're found only in remote locations. If wild animals held athletic contests, a cougar would enter many of the jumping and sprinting events. This agile cat can easily leap distances many times its own length. When bounding after prey, it can switch directions quickly, even in the snow. Cougars are the biggest wild cats in the United States, but the jaguar is the biggest cat in the Western Hemisphere. Jaguar, which lives in Central and South America and Mexico. If you see a jaguar, count yourself lucky. Most people will never get a look at this beautiful cat. In tropical rainforests, be sure to look up as well as all around. You may see a jaguar on the branch above you. Jaguars, leopards, ocelots, and cheetahs all have spots, but the spots are all different between each cat. Jaguars prowl their territories alone, except when males and females come together to mate. These beautiful cats love water and are famous for their fishing techniques. Jaguars live in the tropical forests of Central and South America. That's also where you'll find passion vine caterpillars and butterflies. Passion vine caterpillar, which lives in Central and South America. Swallowing one of these is like taking a cyanide capsule. If you really must taste a caterpillar or butterfly, eat a different one. Or better still, don't eat one at all. 
passion flower leaves, poisonous to most, are a gourmet meal to this caterpillar. If you're a caterpillar, you need to protect yourself. Some wear sharp spines, and others bristle with irritating hair. Or you might look like a bird dropping, then no one would want to eat you. Some caterpillars look like aliens from outer space. But then there are a lot of weird looking creatures in the world of insects. Insect. And yes, before you say anything, I know the spider and the scorpions shouldn't be there. I've learned to appreciate insects. They're really quite fascinating. Besides, there are millions more of them than there are of us, so it would be really best to live in peace with them, don't you think? Imagine living only a small part of your life as an adult. Well, that's what happens with mayflies. Incredible dramas are taking place around us every day. Yet we rarely even notice. That's because all the action is happening in the miniature world of insects. Some insects are harmless to humans. Others can give a painful sting, such as a wasp. Wasp, which lives worldwide except Antarctica. Do not attempt to remove an inhabited wasp nest yourself, unless you're completely protected from head to foot. Or better still, call a professional instead. Those wasps can get pretty testy, let me tell you. This is the fearsome looking female wood wasp. However, that spike is not a stinger, but just a tool for drilling holes and laying eggs. Even a wasp can have a bad day. One might kill a caterpillar, fight to keep it, and haul it home, into the house for a second, and dinner gets stolen. The insect world is incredibly varied. Wasps and beetles are two types of insect. Beetles. Do not pick up a strange beetle. Some have nasty pincers and some can even squirt acid. It's no wonder they're so defensive. Consider your size compared to theirs. Yes, beetles do have wings. They're just covered up. Some beetles are built for battle. When male stag beetles meet, they wrestle by grabbing each other with their curved pincers. There's little doubt about who is the loser. Beetles are insects with special hard wing cases. What about mosquitoes? Are they insects too? Mosquito, which lives almost worldwide. Do you want to keep the mosquito population down around your house? Don't leave water standing in containers. Even an old tin can become a breeding ground. Instead, try putting up a house for insect-eating birds or bats. The Anopheles mosquito can carry dangerous protozoa from person to person. Mosquitoes go through their larval and pupal stages in water before finally developing their adult wings. Only the females bite. They need blood to develop their eggs. Mosquitoes lay their eggs on water, so you'll find mosquitoes in many wetland environments. Wetland environments. If you think that wetlands are good for breeding mosquitoes, you're right. 
but they're also good for breeding fish, birds, frogs, and reptiles. If you're not afraid of getting your feet wet, you'll find they're interesting places. Everything has its proper place and function in a wetland, even tree roots. Wetlands around the world may not always seem friendly to humans, but they're a home to all kinds of creatures. If we fill in or drain our marshes and swamps, where would they go? Male frogs inflate their throat pouches to call for mates. Sometimes, filling yourself with air can be risky. A fast current might sweep you downstream. In the southeastern United States, one of the many wetland animals you'll find is the American alligator. Alligator, which lives in southeast United States and China. Some people think that alligators, not to mention ninja turtles, live in sewers. But don't listen to them. You're much more likely to come across an alligator in a swamp or in the water hazard on a Florida golf course. Just don't get too close to an alligator and you can both continue to relax. Alligators live in North America and China, and their cousins, the caimans, are found in Central and South America. When an anaconda meets a caiman, each might think the other looks like food. It's jaws against muscle, but only one will be the winner, the other will be dinner. An alligator has a vicious bite. So does a snapping turtle. Snapping turtle, which lives in North, Central and South America. Don't walk barefoot in muddy ponds. A snapper might mistake one of your toes for a fish. It's not a very good idea to wade anywhere where the bottom is not visible. Who knows what might be down there? It's hard to hide inside your shell when your head's too big to fit, so it might be wiser to attack. The beach can be a dangerous place for sea turtles. The female comes out of the water and digs a nest in which to lay her eggs. After hatching, the babies run for their lives to the water's edge. The snapping turtle is famous for its powerful jaws. Army ants earn their reputation for the same reason. Army ant, which lives in Africa, India, Central and South America, Australia, and Tropical Asia. No need to lie awake at night worrying about army ants. They have fairly short legs and you can easily outrun them. If they enter your house, take a holiday for a few days and take your pets with you. Thousands of army ants carry their queen in a living nest made of their own bodies, even bridging water. Soldier ants are part of a continuously moving army of hundreds or even thousands of ants. Any animal that doesn't move out of their way is quickly reduced to a skeleton by the army's attack. Army ants can be frightening, but they're easily outrun. However, it's not as easy to get away from killer bees. Killer bee, which lives in South America, Mexico, and Africa. To avoid attracting killer bees, or any bees for that matter, 
Do not wear perfume, scented lotion, or sweet-smelling sunscreens. To a bee, these smell like food. It's called the killer bee because it's more likely to sting than the common honey bee, not because its venom is stronger. A bee sting is a painful experience, both for the victim and for the bee, which dies afterwards. Bees usually sting to protect their colony, so bees are most likely to attack if one gets too close to their nest. Killer bees can deliver painful stings. So also can many water creatures, including a Portuguese man-of-war. Portuguese man-of-war, which lives in tropical seas worldwide. A man-of-war's tentacles can sting long after the creature is dead, so don't touch any part of a man-of-war that you might find on a beach. It starts off as a single polyp and ends up as a colony of thousands of polyps and a gas-filled sail. This is the man-of-war. A man-of-war is not just one creature, it's a whole colony. The gas-filled balloon keeps the colony afloat, while the stinging tentacles below keep it fed. A man of war looks harmless, but it has a very painful sting. Similarly, a tiny blue-ringed octopus may look like a toy, but it has a deadly bite. Blue-ringed octopus, which lives in southwestern Pacific Ocean. A blue ring is only about the size of my hand. If you were that tiny, you'd bite any giant that grabbed you. So feel free to look at a blue ringed octopus, but don't touch it. Blue spots or stripes really show up in the water, and maybe warning, this creature is venomous. Imagine having eight arms to swim with. You could spread out and float like a parachute. Crawl across the bottom and grab a crab with arms to spare. Where would you find a blue ringed octopus? Look off the coast of Australia, near a coral reef. Coral reef. Diving on a coral reef is something similar to visiting another planet. There are animals that look like plants, even the rocks are alive, and there we are the aliens. Many people don't realize that a coral reef is actually a collection of living creatures. Coral reefs are colorful, mysterious, and fragile worlds. We need to protect them now, so that the creatures that inhabit them as well as ourselves, can continue to enjoy these special places. If you visit a coral reef, you'll find beauty and some danger. The same is true of the murky ocean depths. Danger in the depths. It may be the same planet, but the ocean depths are definitely a different world than the one above water. Glow-in-the-dark fish, things with giant heads, it's extremely unusual and very interesting down there. If you live in the dark, it helps to have a built-in flashlight. Scientists used to think that not much lived in the cold and darkness of the ocean depths. But the more we explore, the more we discover that amazing creatures live down there. Who knows how many creatures live in the depths of the ocean? One that scientists suspect might be down there is the giant squid. Giant squid, 
which lives in ocean depths worldwide. Sorry for the trace of a shadow on the map. The animal's picture on the fax screen overlapped the map too much to be fully edited out. Giant squids are found only in very deep water. If you're down in a submarine and see one, stay inside. Even if you got out, you wouldn't have a chance to wrestle with the monster. The water pressure would get you first. Squids can change colour and pattern in a flash. They may do it to hide or to talk to other squids. Most squids and cuttlefish are small creatures that would attack only tiny fish. But a few giants have been dredged up from the ocean depths. How would you like to run into a giant squid when you're diving? Or would you prefer a great white shark? Great white shark which lives in tropical, subtropical, and temperate seas worldwide. If you see a shark fin surface near you while you're swimming, don't panic and start splashing around. Just swim steadily towards the beach, repeating, Jaws was just a movie. Jaws was just a movie. 20,000 teeth in one lifetime. A shark is nothing less than a tooth factory, with rows of replacement teeth always at the ready. Sharks have lived on Earth since dinosaur times. And they haven't changed much for millions of years. Streamlined, powerful predators, they're perfectly suited for life in the sea. Sharks have been on the Earth for hundreds of millions of years. They were among the first prehistoric predators. Prehistoric predators. People are relatively big, powerful animals. But it's a good thing dinosaurs are not around today. We would only be a quick mouthful for the many meat-eaters that lived back then. If you've ever seen a small plane in the sky, Imagine something that size, but alive. That's how big some pterosaurs were. Although plant-eating dinosaurs like Triceratops had armor and spikes for protection, they were probably still attacked by the biggest meat-eaters, like the terrifying Tyrannosaurus rex. Through the ages, people have had a lot of strange ideas about animals. In movies, we show them as giant monsters that are out to get people. That's not real life. That's show business. The dinosaurs are extinct. But a few animals that lived in dinosaur times are still around today. The crocodile is one such animal. Crocodile, which lives in Florida, Africa, Southeast Asia, and Australia. If you see a lot of logs floating in the waterhole, don't dive in. And don't ever underestimate just how fast a crocodile can move. These reptiles can lunge. Can you believe what crocodiles will eat? For a baby crocodile, its mother's mouth is a place of safety. But the same jaws that gently carry babies can easily crush other animals, like this unfortunate snake. Before wading into a river in Africa, Australia, or Asia, you'd better look out for crocodiles. And before wading into a river in South America, you should ask about piranhas. 
piranha, which lives only in South America. Piranhas are more likely to attack when water levels are really low and they're concentrated into small areas. So never go wading in small pools in South America during the dry season, alright? Even with their eyes closed, fish can sense what's going on around them. A single piranha is not much of a threat to a swimming animal. But a hungry school of piranhas, each fish armed with razor-sharp teeth, can quickly reduce a victim to nothing in seconds. A piranha is a small fish with big teeth. For a big fish with big teeth, try a barracuda. Barracuda, which lives in tropical seas worldwide. Don't wear shiny jewellery when you go into the water. It may look great to other swimmers, but to a barracuda, a flash of metal looks like a swimming fish. And you know what barracudas do to fish. If a diver attracts the interest of a barracuda, what should he do? Keep very, very still. Facing a lone barracuda is a frightening experience. But imagine a school of thousands of barracudas. Fortunately, people are not on the barracuda's menu. Fish do not need barracuda teeth to be dangerous. Some defend themselves with venomous spines, like the lionfish. Lionfish, which lives in Western Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, and the Red Sea. Do not walk barefoot in tropical seas where you can't see the bottom clearly. You may accidentally kick a lionfish or step on something even worse. The lionfish hides a venomous spine in each delicate ray. It's beautiful, but it can be deadly. Lionfish are called many different things, including firefish, zebrafish, and devilfish. Some people call it a turkeyfish because of the way it spreads its fins. To keep a predator from biting you, you might find it a good idea to wear sharp spines on your back like a lionfish. Better still, wear spines all over your body and puff up like a porcupine fish. Porcupine fish which lives in warm coastal waters worldwide, primarily coral reefs. Don't try to make a porcupine fish into a pet, it won't thank you. And don't try to eat a puffer fish either, that meal could be your last. Spikes are grown by many underwater creatures, even starfish. Most of the time, a porcupine fish is a sleek swimmer. But when it feels threatened, it puffs up into a spiky ball. When the threat disappears, the fish deflates so it can swim again. If a porcupine fish is attacked by a predator, it puffs itself up. A cane toad also uses this trick. Cane toad, which lives in Central and South America and Australia. Do not hug, kiss, or lick this toad. Its venom could make you very sick. And by the way, that advice goes for any toad. Amphibians, like this toad, are especially sensitive to pollution because they absorb gases and liquids through their skin. 
even if you're small, you can still be intimidating to would-be predators. You might try these few tips for self-defense. Puff up as big as you can, open your mouth wide, and jump right at your attacker. Well done! The cane toad puffs itself up when it feels threatened, and it can also ooze venom from glands in its head. These are just two of the many tricks used by animals for defense. Tricks and traps. Once again, the video will reveal why I chose this animal to represent it. Whether they're underwater or on land, animals can be very tricky. My cat likes to hide behind the curtain and ambush me as I walk by. I'm certainly glad he's not a leopard. Quite a few animals are great actors. To avoid predators, they play the role of a dangerous creature. If you're a small frog, it pays to have a trick or two. This one not only puffs up to a much larger size, but also has eyes on its backside to confuse an attacker. Both predators and prey alike use all kinds of tricks and traps. What kind of sneaky things might a tiger do? Tiger, which lives in India, Thailand, Indonesia, China, and Siberia. Tigers don't like to attack prey that's looking at them. If you must go for a hike in tiger country, wear a mask on the back of your head. You may feel silly, but the eyes of the mask might keep a tiger from sneaking up behind you. This is no pussycat. The tiger hunts with incredible speed and strength. Tigers need three things. Cover from which to stalk their prey, water, and of course, the prey itself. Tigers live in Asia. Another dangerous creature that lives there is the cobra. Cobra, which lives in Africa, Arabia, India, and Southeast Asia. When you're in cobra country, don't sleepwalk. These snakes hunt at night, often around human dwellings. People milk venom from some snakes to make anti-venom for counteracting snake bites. Cobras are rather slow snakes. Speedy animals like large birds and members of the weasel family can often rush in and bite a cobra before it can bite back. Some types of cobras slither around in Africa. In some areas, they have to watch out for the sharp hooves of the Cape Buffalo. Cape Buffalo, which lives only in Africa. These are not tame cattle. Cape Buffaloes have killed people. When you're on safari, stay in the vehicle. The front legs and hooves of the Cape Buffalo are very strong. They have to be to carry all that weight. An African buffalo pays no attention to an oxpecker cleaning its face. But if a human approaches, the buffalo may decide to charge. It's best to keep your distance from a herd. One predator that a Cape Buffalo is likely to meet on the African savanna is the Cape Hunting Dog. Cape Hunting Dog, 
which lives only in Africa. If you're hiking across the African plains and you see a pack of cape hunting dogs running towards you, they're probably lost. Just direct them to the nearest herd of zebras. Each member of a pack of hunting dogs treats the leader with respect. Cape hunting dogs live in packs. When hunting, they work together, and in this way, they can bring down animals much larger than themselves. Cape hunting dogs routinely bring down animals much larger than themselves. This is because they hunt cooperatively in packs. Packs and partners. All animals have relationships with other animals whether they want to or not. For example, my cat and I are always arguing over who really runs the house. Some animals don't live in groups because they need to. They seem to enjoy it that way. Lions are the only cooperative hunters in the feline family. The group effort pays off. By hunting as a team, they can bring down prey big enough to feed a whole pride. Several wild dogs hunt in packs, but among the cats, the lion is the only cooperative hunter. Lion, which lives in Africa and India. Within a pride, lions are used to fighting and wrestling with each other, even the cubs. So never tease a lion cub, it may come after you with its claws out. In the lion family, mother hunts, but father's the boss. A lioness stalks through the tall grass. African grazing animals are used to the sight, so panic doesn't set in until she charges. <laughs> Although the females made the kill, the whole pride shares the meal. Lions are among the bigger predators, but the largest on land are the big bears, like the polar bear. Polar bear, which lives in Alaska, Canada, Greenland, and Eurasian Arctic coasts. <laughs> Polar bears can run faster than you can, and they've been known to track their prey for days. But unless you're planning on exploring the Arctic alone, you'll never need to outrun a polar bear. What a swimmer! The polar bear can swim far and fast, and it's practically unsinkable. The Arctic. A world of ice, snow, and bone-chilling water. The environment that would kill a person is only a wintry playground for young polar bears. Polar bears can paddle around in icy waters. Another mammal that you might see swimming among the ice flows is the killer whale. Killer whale, or orca, which lives in subarctic and subantarctic seas. Again, sorry about the shadow on the map. Killer whales, orcas, rarely attack people. So unless you spend a lot of time swimming with salmon, penguins or seals, you're safe. The orca is actually a dolphin. An orca stalks its prey not only at sea, but sometimes on the shore. 
After catching a seal, an orca may play with it like a cat with a mouse. Orcas may look like fish, but they're actually mammals. Isn't it amazing to think that there are some warm-blooded, air-breathing animals that live their entire lives in the oceans? Ocean environments. There's a whole different world beneath the surface of the ocean. It's fascinating, it's beautiful, and sometimes it's a little scary. Just about everything in the ocean is somebody's dinner. This female mantis shrimp keeps a sharp eye, or rather, two sharp eyes, out for intruders. If one comes along, she'll fight to defend her nest and her eggs. In the program, this leads to an activity called Super Senses. Many fish can detect tiny vibrations in the water, or the electric impulses of creatures around them. These are just two of the super senses that some wild animals have. And super senses leads to a game that'll come up another time, so that's the end of this chain. In part three, the elephant begins a brand new one.